Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Today we are going to talk about the Casio Rap One Rapman. To be honest, I feel a bit guilty because I used last month Patreon vocoder shoutout to ask you for additional hate for this 1991 home keyboard. In spite of its countless flaws, I couldn't fill the infamous bulletin board of the test, but I really wanted to have the world's first rap keyboard on the show. Casio is, among other things, known for little plasticky instruments that punch above their weight. The iconic bleeps of the VL1 had a profound influence on pop music, the lo-fi crunch of the SK1 allowed for flatulence-driven Mozart covers, <laughs> and the Millennium Falcon-shaped trackformer. No, forget that one. While not as popular as its siblings, the Rapman did have a certain impact. Peter Gabriel was so into it that he had to be dragged back into the studio by Daniel Lanois and it inspired a famous YouTuber to say I don't want to over romanticize bad gear. Well, why not? At the first glance, the Casio Rapman is ticking all the boxes. This time for real. Keys that make the microcorg look like a grand piano, a proto DJ hero scratch wheel and three buttons for hits and fills. The sample-based and presumably partly PD-generated sound set is a weird collection of lo-fi synth sounds, a pretty nice vibraphone, a metal guitar worthy of a 90s new metal album, odd sound effects and a misleading but cool sounding Wokoda sample. Just to name a few. Polyphony is limited to three voices in play mode, but is reduced to one voice when you switch the machine to rap. This mode lets you choose from 30 different patterns, 12 drum-only loops with a surprising lack of both bass and treble, and 18 accompaniment patterns, some of them reminiscent of hip-hop, and R&B classics. No, you can't change the snare sound. Using either the scratch wheel or effects pads will insert a one bar break. The voice effector what? ranges from chain smoking Darth Vader to helium balloon abuse. It is not ideal for live singing, as there are no clean octaves, but can be used as an FX unit for line sources as well. Casio was kind enough to include a microphone, and it's adorable. It goes without saying that the device has a built-in speaker, a battery compartment, there's no MIDI and all connectors are mini jacks. The little keyboard was originally sold for 90 pounds sterling and can be found on Reverb for around 70 Earth credits. Mine was 390 Austrian shilling. The Casio Rapman is a toyish and deeply flawed instrument, but I still had to take desperate measures to get it on the show. Is it too cute for bad gear? You have already heard the rap one in today's intro tune. I cheated a little. The unprocessed tones of the little keyboard are sometimes hard to take. Please bear with me while we listen to the pure and undiluted sounds of the first jam. Now 
Now that's what I call an early 90s cheese fest. Still, a few of these mid-rangey, artifact ridden and somewhat random elements might work in a more diversely instrumented arrangement. The rap man's drum and bass sounds are lacking punch and depth. Let's crank up the tempo and push them over the edge with some guitar FX. that escalated quickly. The drum loop benefited from the lower octave generated by the electroharmonics pod, and a little moog crunch has never harmed anyone. Things got a little messy, but I think you got the idea. While working with the Rapman, I often got the feeling that its strange sounds are almost there, but not quite. I wanna know if we can make them sound good with the power of the DAW in this surprisingly optimistic 70 miles per hour cruise control deep and dubby house construct. Some of you might think that the Casio Rapman doesn't belong on bad gear. First of all, this show is supposed to reflect on hate, not incite it. And I think we can all agree that there are already enough weird talking guys on social media sowing the seeds of controversy. What is more, the little keyboard was originally designed for home use, and it's debatable whether it should be judged by the same criteria as a pro instrument. I disagree on the latter point. Flawed and primitive as it is, it can bring quite some weird freshness and playful inspiration to the table. And I think we know all too well that many flagship instruments of past and present fail in this respect. Apart from that, it's a lot of fun during studio breaks, you can keep a little crowd entertained with just the keyboard and a few batteries and toddlers will find a great starting point for a later synth addiction. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. Thanks to all my patrons for supporting the channel and welcome to the monthly Vokoda shoutouts. We're going to start with tier 4, thanks for watching, see you next time. Sorry for neglecting the Vokoda of the Roland SP808EX in last week's episode. I'm really looking forward to giving it a try now. Carrier signal is the Novation Sayo Synth. <laughs> Tiers 5 and 6. Let's stay with the SP-808 and use the Casio Rapman's voice effector as the modulation source. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for supporting the channel. See you next month.